This is a walkthrough of my honours project, which is a implementation of the Bitplane Complexity Segmentation Algorithm for Steganography. Now, steganography is uh, where a carrier form of media is used to hide a payload and allow that payload to reach its destination or uh, whatever uh, undiscovered. Um, actually, goes back to like pre Greek times, and it's it's essentially um, if you. If you're familiar with acrostics, where like the first letter of each word in a sentence forms another word, it's it's essentially that, but in a much more uh, image-based way. In this instance, I, I'll very quickly give you a run through, so you'll be able to see what we're uh, what I'm talking about. I've got two images set up here. One's called carrier, uh, and one's called payload. Now, two entirely different images, I, and I shall. What the program does is will take the payload image, translate it into a uh, byte code and then we'll write it into the background noise of the carrier image. Um, so if you'll give me two seconds, I will... I've got it set up as a jar on the desktop, but obviously it can run fully from Eclipse as well. Um, I've got to set a couple of flags. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the first one's uh, dash B for to specify it as being bit plane complexity. I'll go into that in, uh, uh, shortly as to why that is. Next, flag is E for encode and then I just specify the images. So I'll run that and what that will do is that will give us an output file here to the original carrier. Um, let's see quickly, there we go. Uh, so if I open, uh, we'll have a, so there you go, you see the image there and if we open You'll see there is next to no noticeable difference between the two. Um, now, just to prove that there is something embedded in the background, I will run the other operation, which is exactly the same, uh, except with a D flag set for decode, and we'll go to bitplane complexity, the output. So we'll run that, and that'll create a file called extracted. Um, those are just default file names, um, and there we go, uh, and you can compare that to the actual original, and you see there's been no degradation or anything like that, uh, the full image is written, and there's no form of compression going on with it, um, so you can, uh, you can try and extract an image uh, from something that's not uh, it's not an image and it'll just say it can't find anything uh, no embedded payload located now the re those images were ones that I've pre-sized uh, to make sure that they fit but sometimes you might want to double check uh, what image uh, capacity there is so there's a flag set for that um, you use neg uh, dash m for mapping uh, and then if you have a, a look at uh, carrier it will basically it will go through the image and it will extrapolate exactly what areas are noisy and which uh, areas are useful. Now it, set, it gives you two values there. So the total size is 381 kilobytes within that carrier image. Also gives you a maximum size. Now the reason it does that is that it iterates through all eight bit planes uh, and for the uh, and the maximum size recommended one is all the noisy areas located in the lower four uh, bit planes because ultimately they have less of an effect on the, the overall uh, colour decisions whereas the ones in the upper four they tend to, to have more of a value or they have more of an effect if they get changed. It's called the Hamming Cliff um, and the best way to illustrate that is you'll see I've got two other images there, Rudolph Under and Rudolph Over. Now file size wise uh, the total size available is 381. Now, Rudolph over is about 380 uh, K, uh, which you can see, yep, Rudolph over, and Rudolph under uh, is 358. Now, uh, Rudolph under is under the recommended value. So what I will do is I will just quickly uh, uh, embed uh, both of them into the carrier, and you'll be able to see exactly what we'll try with Rudolph over 
Now, there's actually only one pixel of a difference between the two uh, lengthways, but it's, it's enough to, to change the values. So, um, no, do over first. So this will create another file, uh, which I think it's, it'll be BPCS output one. Basically, the program checks to see if the file name already exists. If not, then, uh, or if it does, then, uh, in that case it's over. Oh no, there we go. Um, so if you have a wee look at like that, then you'll see this is over and you can see there's very clear distortion and pixelation there and even without knowing the what the original image looks like you would that would maybe be enough to arouse uh, suspicion. So we'll have a wee look at what Rudolph under happens. Now bear in mind this is very very similar See the pic you see it's just a, a picture of a cat. That's all. And this one will this created BPCS output two. Desktop's getting a wee bit messy. So if you open that and you see quite a marked difference between the two. Still maybe a wee bit pixelated, especially here. Uh, but you can see that there's very clear degradation there, whereas that it's kind of hidden. It's not uh, affecting the overall image as much, which is why it's always better to go with the um, the, the recommendation. Um, the other, if you get lost, the program also has a usage uh, file, which is just um, same as it would be in any other uh, program. You type usage or help, and it will specify that you've got a couple of flags for an encoder. Um, you you can specify the carrier, the payload, and then you've got the optional output file name. Uh, for the decoder, you've got the flags, you've got the target, and again, an optional output file name. Now, you can here's the thing that I was saying earlier on. You've got the option to specify a negative L or a dash L, which is because um, because I kind of used only significant bit steganography as the first step to heading towards bit plane complexity steganography, then it it makes sense to just incorporate that into the final program uh, and to be honest there's a very simple interface uh, behind the program so anything which implements a simple uh, initialize uh, function and an activate function can be drawn in so it, it is quite expandable um, I will quickly run through the really significant bit one this is where the images are overwritten or the the least significant bit of a of a carrier image is significant, or is progressively just overwritten as you go with the bit the bytes. It tends to be more obvious, and you generally only get about one or two uh, bits worth before you're starting to see real uh, noticeable degradation. But I'll just quickly do that. So dash l for LSB encode and carrier and payload. And this so it's created LSB output, um, and that's not too bad actually. Um, I think generally, if you choose quite busy images, then you can hide an awful lot in them. Um, but also, just because something has one form of steganography in it, doesn't mean that you can decode it in the form of another. Uh, so we try to take LSB output uh, and decode it as if it was a bit plane complexity uh, steganography image, and it will see no embedded payload located. So what that what that actually means is that the bit plane complexity model uh, has a file header as the very first um, a piece of information which tells you uh, the, the file size so, so the, the algorithm knows when to stop. Um, so because that's uh, been done using the least significant bit, it's not set up in that way. So there's no pattern for it to, to actually recognize. Um, so that really is the the main part of my project. Uh, there's a couple other wee things uh, specified, um, like uh, as I said, you can you can do your own file names, which will be like test.png, and that'll create uh, the output file rather than following the BPCS output. Uh, that will create one as uh, using the the file name specified um, eventually. Uh, sorry, this has been done on a very old Mac. I said test.png created. Um, it even, uh, it, 
even forces a, a rename um, if it detects that there's a problem with the the, um, the file naming convention. It's, the program's only set up for PNGs, um, so if somebody tries to, to get it to output it as a JPEG, it will rewrite it, and as you can see, it will check whether the file name already exists and sticks a, an incremental number uh, at the end of it. So uh, hopefully that gives you a good overview of what I've been doing for the last year's worth of term. Um, okay, dokie. Thank you.